because of this incredible self-education, he discovered things that all of the people going to Oxford and Cambridge never discovered about electricity. A brilliant, highly creative man, and he got there because he was so persistent and so hungry and found his vocation. There was a scientist called Michael Faraday. I don't know how many of you have heard of Michael Faraday. Okay, you've, a lot of you have heard of him. He's one of the greatest scientists. He's not actually as well known as an Einstein or a Darwin, but he's been incredibly influential. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't have electrical motors. And it's he who was the first person to discover basic field theories that inspired Maxwell and then Einstein. Okay, but the thing about Michael Faraday that's just so unbelievable is he was born in the 1790s in London in poverty. His father was a blacksmith and there were like 12 children. They belonged to a very particular religious sect called Sandominians, which is a very strange sect. And they also believed in having more children than, than as, po as many children as possible. And at a very early age, his father became lame and couldn't work, so the family had no food. Anyway, Michael Faraday couldn't go to school because he was too poor. He had to run errands for his mother. And, but he had an incredibly active mind. And so one day, he wandered when he's about eight, nine years old, he wanders into a bookstore in London near his home. Uh, it's a bookstore and a book binder because in, back in those days, the two things were combined. And he's just sort of, oh, he's looking at the books like it's magic because the only book he has ever known is the Bible. And according to his religion, the Bible is not just a book. It's the word of God itself. So it's not just pages. It's like literally magic. So he's seeing these other books like, oh my God, they're like the Bible. And he's blown away and he's so excited that he starts talking to the owner of the bookshop. And the owner is charmed by this boy who's so interested in books. And so Michael Faraday keeps returning to him every day almost. And finally, the man who owns the bookstore says, all right, I, I'm going to offer you an apprenticeship as a bookbinder. Or he hires them as an errand boy, and then he offers them an apprenticeship. And his family is ecstatic because he's now going to have a trade. Um, at the age of 12, he'll serve seven years bookbinding. And for Faraday now, he can work in this bookshop and he can read every single book that could come in there. And there were no libraries really back in those days, and there weren't really bookstores for people who were poor. He now had the chance to read. So he starts reading and reading and reading. Every night, that's all he does. He takes the books home and reads. And he, and he decides, I love science. I'm, I love science. I love electricity. Electricity is like God. Things are moved, but you can't see where, who's moving it. And he's obsessed with electricity. So he gets all the books on electricity that he can. And he starts doing experiments in the back of the bookbinding place. And the guy who owns it is very open to that. And he decides, I'm going to become a scientist. The weird thing is, you can't become a scientist unless you go to Oxford or Cambridge, or maybe the University of Edinburgh at that time. Just forget it. It's absolutely impossible. There's not one single example of a scientist who ever succeeded without going to Oxford or Cambridge. And the son of a blacksmith who's an apprentice bookbinder can't go to Oxford or Cambridge. So how will it ever happen? And I pose myself that riddle, because in the biographies, they don't really go into it. How did he do it? Well, one day, one of the books that he reads is like a how-to book written in the 18th century about how to improve the mind. And he's obsessed with that book, and it gives you lessons on how you can teach yourself, how you can become an autodidact. And it tells you that you should take notes on everything and you should learn how to draw so that you can draw things, and you should go to lectures, as many lectures as possible. He follows it to the letter, and he ends up going to all of these lectures and creating his own science book, because he can draw really well. After several years, he has a volume this thick of all of his notes, well organized into books with all of these drawings, and one day there wanders into, a, into this bookshop a real scientist from the Royal Science uh, Academy, Royal Society, and he sees this book and he goes, my God, this is, a, this is a wunderkind. This is a prodigy. Who is this young man? He meets him and he says, wow, you're amazing. I'm going to let you come to the meetings of the Royal Society, which is not open to the public. And he does that. Through that introduction, he's eventually introduced to one of the greatest scientists of that era named Humphrey Davy, 
a great chemist, electrician. And one day, Humphrey Davy's assistant gets in an argument and is fired. And so Humphrey Davy remembers this little, this young man who's so eager, who taught himself everything, and he says, I'm going to do something really strange. I'm going to hire him as my new laboratory assistant. And that was usually generally only reserved for people who'd gone to Oxford and Cambridge. So now he has an apprenticeship with the greatest scientist of the time. He's watching him night and day. He learns how to make chemical experiments of the highest order. And he becomes the greatest experimental scientist, Michael Faraday, of the 19th century. And he did it because of this incredible self-education. He discovered things that all of the people going to Oxford and Cambridge never discovered about electricity. He created an experiment to physically demonstrate how electricity can move something, which led to the first motor. A brilliant, highly creative man. And he got there because he was so persistent and so hungry and found his vocation. Uh, so he illustrates all of my laws. And I fell in love with him because he had nothing to start with. He had everything against him, and he was able to reach it.